When you're playing PUBG, it can be very confusing with the different times to kill you come across in the game. One minute you're blasting away at someone across a field with your M16, and it seems like they've taken a whole clip, yet they still get away. And the next, he turns around and kills you instantly with a headshot from a car 98. In this video, I'm going to explain why this happens, and in the description below, you'll find links to articles and videos that kind of go into it in more depth and are the background for what I've written and said here. So, first up in PUBG, you, I mean, you know this already, but your health bar at the bottom of the screen represents 100 health points. And as you take damage, this goes down. If we're injured, we can get more health by using bandages and first aid kits, and they can heal us up to 75% of our full health. If you find a med kit, you know, those big ones that look like suitcases, they'll heal you back to 100% health. And then if you drink energy drinks or take painkiller tablets, these will fill up your boost bar, which is just above, which in turn then feeds back into your health bar. If you get your boost bar up to three quarters to all the way full, you'll also get a speed boost so you can move around a little bit quicker. If you come across an adrenaline syringe in a supply drop, they will give you 100% boost immediately. Now, now we've got that bit out of the way, let's talk about those nasty weapons that will take away your health. Now, each weapon in the game per bullet delivers a different amount of base damage. And again, I'll put links in the description at the bottom for more detailed explanations of this. But if we take, for example, the uh, UMP submachine gun, a very popular submachine gun found in lots of places, one bullet from that, the base damage at the moment in the game is, is 35. And remember, all these figures and these numbers, they can change as the developer balances the game. So the base damage is 35 from the UMP. Um, for something like the AKM assault rifle, like the AK-47 type rifle, it's 48. The very popular M16 gives you a base damage of 41. The SKS, uh, the um, uh, sniper rifle, uh, does 55, or designated marksman rifle, I guess it is. Uh, the Mini-14 gives 44 base damage, and the Car-98 has a base damage of 72, much, much higher. However, how much actual damage the bullet will deal you depends on where it hits you, on what armor or helmet you're wearing at the time. And these factors either increase or multiply that damage or decrease or divide that damage. So if someone hits you in the chest with no armor, you'll be dealt the base damage from that gun. If someone hits you in the arms or the legs, there's a 50% reduction to that base damage. If someone hits you in the head, however, there's a 2.5 times multiplier on that base damage. That's a 250% increase in damage, which is massive. In practical terms, that means that if someone shoots you in the legs or arms with a UMP, you'll take 17 damage for each bullet, so it'll take six shots to kill you. If they shoot you in the chest, it's base damage of 35, so it'll take, what, three shots to kill you. However, if they shoot you in the head, they get that 2.5 times multiplier to the base damage, which means 88 damage, so it'll only take two shots. And chances are they'll be aiming for your upper chest anyway, and with an automatic weapon it'll only take two shots because the recoil from the gun will kick that final shot up into your head. If someone's got an AKM assault rifle, a shot to the legs or arms deals 24 damage, so it'll take five shots to kill you. If you get hit in the chest, you'll get the base damage of 48, so that's three bullets to kill you. And if you get hit in the head, again, we get that 2.5 times multiplier damage, and that cuts in, which means you'll get 120 damage, which is enough to kill you with one bullet, or an instantaneous kill. And this should start to make you realise how important headshots are in PUBG. All isn't bad, though, because we have armour to protect as all hinderers depending on if you're trying to take shots or you're trying to kill someone else. So let's start with body armor. And it comes, as you know already, it comes in three levels. At level one, the armor reduces the base damage of a bullet by 30%. At level two, it reduces the base damage by 40%. And level three by 55%. Now, body armor only protects your waist to your upper chest and not your arms, legs, or obviously your head. So if we go back to the UMP, if you're getting hit in the chest while wearing a level 1 vest, the base damage will be reduced from 35 to 24 and a half, so it'll take 5 shots to kill you. If you're wearing level 2 armour, you'll still be killed in 5 shots, 
but with level 3 armour, it'll take 6 shots to kill you. And to put that in perspective, that's twice as many bullets compared to if you weren't wearing any body armour at all. If the AKM is firing at your chest, with level 1 armour it'll take 3 shots to kill you. With level 2 armour, that'll increase to 4 shots, and it's the same for level 3 as well. Now, I can hear you saying, well, what about the damage my armour and my helmets take? You know, when you look at your inventory screen and you see your lovely level 2 vest go from 220 down to 100, well, that number is the durability or health of that vest or helmet. And it is very, very important to understand that the level of health or durability of armour or helmets does not affect the damage reduction it gives. A level 3 vest with 10 points of durability left will still offer a 55% reduction in damage from chest shots. The durability of armour or helmets is reduced every time they are hit, and it goes down based on the base damage of the bullet that hit it. And when the durability or the health gets to zero, you lose the vest, you know, it disappears. So, if that pesky UMP was shooting at us again, it has a base damage to the chest of 34, so the level 1 vest has 200 health or durability points, so it'll take 6 shots to destroy that vest. A level 2 vest will last for 7 shots, and a level 3 vest the same. Obviously, if your vest takes damage, swap it for a fresh one of equal or higher strength, but only swap it for a lower fresh vest if your vest has less than 120 durability points left. Otherwise, there isn't any advantage and you'll be less protected. Okay, so let's talk about helmets, which obviously protect your head. And again, they come in three levels, and just like the vests, level 1 helmets offer a 30% de decrease to damage, level 2, 40%, and level 3, 55%. So... This guy with this UMP, he's been a real pain, and he's firing at our head now. Um, and let's say you've got a level 1 helmet on. The base damage from a UMP is 35, but if he hit you in the head, we've got to times that by 2.5, so that's 87.5. But our level 1 helmet reduces that by 30%, so we end up being damaged for 81.5, or 2 shots to kill. With the level 2 helmet, the damage is 52.5, so it's still 2 shots to kill. But with the level 3 helmet... The damage per bullet is 40, which means that it's three shots to kill us. If we were being fired at by the AKM and we're being hit in the head, it'll take two shots to kill us no matter what helmet we've got on. If it's an SKS, Marksman's Rifle, and we're taking hits to the head, it's one shot to kill us with a level 1 helmet, and it'll take two bullets from a level 2 and a level 3 helmet. The real value of a level 3 helmet comes into its own against snipers though. The Car 98, a popular sniper, will one shot kill through a level 1 and a level 2 helmet, but not a level 3. True, the supply drop rifles like the M24 and the MK14 are the same, and the AW1, the, the monster, you don't want to cross, come across someone with an AWM, the AWM will one shot kill through anything. But what this shows us is that it's always worth keeping a level 3 helmet no matter how damaged it is because it will prevent you from being one-shotted by the most commonly used snipers in the game. Giving you a second chance, allowing you to reposition, heal and then engage or run away. This is why you never give up a level 3 helmet no matter how badly damaged it is. So, by now you're probably a bit tired of all this talk, but I'd like to leave you with a few conclusions from looking in detail at how weapon damage, armour and headshots work in PUBG. So, the first one. The two and a half times headshot multiplier means that the player who can cons consistently land headshots will win more gunfights, whether that be in close quarters or medium to long range. In fact, in close quarters, getting a headshot can lead to a virtual instant kill, allowing assault rifles to compete with shotguns and SMGs. So, always aim for the upper chest and head and with an automatic weapon as i said before the recoil should kick that aim up into a headshot this was a surprising one for me the car 98 rifle is a headshot only machine it's not worth trying to hit people in the chest because it won't kill them and um, because of the long reload time in fact the car 98 if you're only good at hitting people in the chest and can't get headshots just don't use it you know you've always got to aim for the head otherwise you want to be using a faster firing assault rifle like um you know an m16 or or, or or the ak or the m416 or the sks or the mini 14 sort of sniper rifles however if you're up against someone who's got a car 98 and remember you can spot this from the kill feed in the top right end of the screen um, or it's one of the supply drop sniper rifles and you can normally hear the difference with them they're very loud be very 
very careful because unless you're wearing a level three helmet, they can one shot you to the head. Now, one of the ways that you can spot this, apart from looking in the kill feed, is that if you're engaged in a gunfight, so you look around a corner and you see someone peeking at you, but they haven't fired yet, okay? <laughs> Don't assume it's just because they're a bit dumb. What it is, they've got a car 98 or they've got an AWM, they've got one of the bolt action sniper rifles, and they know that if they headshot you, you'll be dead and what they're doing is they're taking that extra time to line up that headshot and also these guns that they'll be using are very low very slow on the reload so if they miss that shot they know you're going to get a low in load in so if you ever look around a corner and someone's looking at you and they haven't fired yet they've probably got a car 98 so you would don't try and fire at them don't go oh they're a bit slow i'll try and get a shot off because they'll by the time you do they'll have shot at you you want to get back into cover and then think about your options maybe throwing some smoke going around the other side flanking that sort of thing because they will kill you straight away now the third thing boosts are very important because they, they can keep your health up to 100 and although you do get the most advantage when you take them all at once because you get the speed speed uh, rush and you get the most health recovery, try and keep them um, keep try and keep your health up all the time. So if you've got some, if you go down to seventy five percent health or less than seventy five percent health, and you use your bandages and your medic kicks to get you up to seventy five, use a boost to get you up to one hundred. And then try and keep a load so that when you're going into the final circles or you know you're inside the top ten, you want to scoff them all down. Take all your take all your energy drink drinks, take all your painkillers, and then as you're taking fire, because you won't have enough time to use bandages or med kits or first aid kits in the final circles, that boost will be ticking down into your health bar and healing yourself and in fact a good practical thing to do is when you're running around and um, looting if you see a uh, something like a, a boost on the floor like a an energy drink or a um, or painkillers don't leave them if your um, if your inventory is full drink one of the energy drinks you've got or take the one of the painkillers you've got and then pick up the other one and that way that will always be ticking back so if you get into a firefight you'll have some health that will tick back into your main bar Number four, don't swap damaged armor for a fresh one of a lower level unless the durability of that damaged armor has dropped below 120. <laughs> and never give up a level three helmet, no matter how damaged it is. Now, number five, it's always going to take more bullets to kill someone else than you'd expect. And you'll always die to less bullets than you'd expect. And this, this is just Soddle or Murphy's Law. But what it means is keep firing until you're sure they're dead. <laughs> and also it means that if someone's at range, especially in the later part of the game, because you know in the later part of the game people will have at least level 2 vests, they'll have at least level 2 helmets. If you see someone running along and you think, right, I'm, I'm going to have a pop at these. Remember, as soon as you start firing, you're going to be giving away your position to anybody else who's around. So you better make damn sure it's worth getting that kill. And so if you think, actually, say someone's it's going to take me a few kills this person, can I get enough bullets into this person before they duck around the next bit of cover? Because if you can't, there's no point taking that shot. And obviously, keep firing at someone until you're sure they're dead. <laughs> I know it comes up with a thing. And if you start taking hits, make sure you get into cover and heal up immediately. Don't stand in the middle of the in the middle of a field taking bullets trying to kill someone else because they'll probably kill you first. So I know there's been a lot of talking, but let's round this up by going back to that original example of the guy running across a field that doesn't seem to die, and yet you get one-shotted in return. So what's actually happening is the guy who's running across the field has a level 3 vest and a level 3 helmet. He's got full health and is boosted to the max. And because of that full boost, he's running a bit faster than normal, and he's zigzagging, so it's very difficult to hit him and almost impossible to get a headshot. Now you're shooting at him, Say you've got a four time scope on with your M16 on single fire. The M16 has a base damage of 41, which is reduced to 18.45 by that level three vest he's got on. So if you hit him in the chest, right, you're gonna have to hit a fast moving, zigzagging target six times. Think about that, six times. When he's in the distance, he's zigzagging around, you've got to hit him six times to kill him. And what's probably going to happen is you're going to miss quite a few of those shots and you're probably going to hit him in the arms or the legs a couple of times or two and all, all of this makes the time to kill very very long and making it seem like he's indestructible and you've had to use a whole clip 
Now then he stops. He turns around and aims at you with the car 98. Now, you've managed to loot a level 2 vest and a helmet, level 2 helmet, but it doesn't matter because that car 98 deals 72 base damage, which means that when it hits you in the head, that is increased to 180 damage. Now, your level 2 helmet can only decrease that by 40% to 108, so that means that with one well-placed bullet, your game is over, and that guy is coming over to take all your hard-earned loot. So you see how that kind of works. You've got to hit this guy six times to kill him because you're hitting him in the chest. He's only got to hit you one time because he's hit you in the head of the car, 98. But at least you know why now. Okay, so hopefully this video has been helpful. Put your questions and comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again soon.